Okay, good morning everybody. Let's get started. Um, today I'm going to be talking to you about responsive images, about the new HTML standard that is um, in browsers these days, about the new markup, so the picture element, the source set attribute, and the sizes attribute, and what that means for WordPress in the upcoming release. Um, first, a quick bit about myself. Um, I'm from Leuven, a university town in Belgium. I'm a PHP developer. Um, I have a bunch of plugins and a bunch of themes on the WordPress.org repository. I do theme reviews. Um, I do some core contribution too. Um, and when I'm not coding, I'm playing badminton, I'm running, or I'm part of a charity that's active in Romania. Um, you can also follow me on Twitter and on Instagram, um, at Janemans. Um, here's our agenda for today. First, we'll have a look at why we need a solution for responsive images. So some of the issues that we have these days and why that's a problem. Then we'll have a look at the new markup um, and how that new markup is going to solve those problems. And then last but not least, what that means if for WordPress in the release that's coming right now. So the definition of responsive according to the dictionary is quick to react in a way that is needed, suitable, or right for a particular situation. With the responsive design that we've been doing these days, um, we've been focusing on the latter part, so it's suitable or right for a particular situation. That means that our pages are going to adapt themselves depending on the device that you're viewing them on. So if it's a, if it's a phone or a tablet or a big monitor, the web page is gonna change, change accordingly, and that's great. But we are in danger of forgetting the first part of the definition of responsive in that it also has to be fast. It has to be quick to react. It doesn't matter if your page adapts itself to a phone if it's going to take four seconds to load. Then the user is going to be gone anyway. So speed is a crucial part of responsive design. And with speed, um, we also have to talk about images because images are everywhere on the web these days. If you want to do anything, you need lots of images. If you want to tell a story, if you want to sell a product, if you want to sell yourself or promote yourself, you're going to have background images, profile images, product shots, multiples. Um, and the more images we have, the heavier a page gets. Um, in this graph from HTTP Archive, we have the average composition of a, of a web request. And here we see that almost 75% of every web request consists of images. So that's a massive part of everything, of every page that you visit. In the second graph, um, we see the number of images per page and the sizes of those images. So the number of images per page has stagnated over the past years, but the size of the average image is always going up. That's because cameras are getting better, the, the, the cameras in our phones are always getting better. Um, which results in larger images. Those images are ending up on the web, naturally, and that's great, but more images, larger images, makes for larger page loads. Um, on top of that, we have retina displays. Um, in 2010, Apple released the iPhone 4, which was the first smartphone with a retina display. Um, a retina display is a display that has a double pixel density, so for a display that's the same size, it has double the pixels. And if you want to display an image sharply on a retina display, the image has to be much larger than it, than it used to be on, on a normal display. Um, since 2010, numerous other devices have been released, um, often with even higher pixel densities. There's 2.53 and even 4 X um, screens these days, which require massive images to get that same image quality. Um, and that's the big retina problem. How can we serve a good quality image for a retina device? So that means a huge file. And how can we serve a normal quality image for a normal screen to both users on the same page? Um, there's actually no way we can really do this right now. Um, there's a number of ways around this. For example, we can try to fix this with CSS. So here we have an image tag that serves um, a big image, coffee.jpg, and we have a media query that's going to 
um, replace the contents of that image tag with a smaller image. Um, this is great and it looks like it works, but the problem with this is that the browser is going to prefetch images. So as the page gets loaded, the browser is already going to scan the HTML for images and it's going to start downloading those even before the CSS is processed. So the browser is going to download coffee.jpg long before the user gets to see it and then is going to download espresso.jpg when the CSS is processed. So this is actually making it worse because you're downloading two things instead of one. Next problem is the classic stretchy responsive design um, in which we give an image 100% max width and it just fills whatever size it's on. And that's great, that works. But the problem with this is that, for example, if you have um, a page with a giant background image on your 27 inch screen, it looks great. It's a huge image. But if you visit that same page on an Android phone from 2009, for example, that phone is going to have to process the same image. And it's going to have to downscale that image to fit on its display. Um, the problem here is twofold. First of all, the phone has to download the huge image, so it's an impact on the bandwidth of the user. And second of all, the phone has to resize the image for that display, so it's an impact on the battery life of the phone. This is, both of these problems are um, going to be solved with the new responsive images markup, which we will have a look at right now. Um, responsive images in HTML came to be by the Responsive Images Community Group. Um, this is a group of web developers who got together and who um, thought up this standard, basically. Um, this is one of the first times that this has happened, that actual web developers made the standard and got it implemented, so it's kind of special. Um, the idea for this got started in 2012. The group is chaired by Matthew Marquis um, out of Boku in Boston. And you can follow their web blog right there. It's very interesting because they do much more than just this part of responsive images. They're also working on a number of other things that, are, that might be coming to HTML sooner or later. So let's have a look at the new markup. First of all, the retina problem. This is where that gets solved. We have our normal image tag. We have an alt tag, of course. You should always have an alt tag for accessibility. And then we have a source set attribute with a list of images in it. Behind each image, behind each file name, we list with the X descriptor how or for which display the images fit. So here in the source set, we have large.png with 2X and largest.png with 3X. If the browser views this image, it's going to, on a normal screen, show the user medium.png. If the user is on a retina screen, it's going to show you large.png. And if, you, if the user is on a 3x screen, it's going to show you largest.png. Right? That's quite obvious. Um, now, you might be wondering, well, say a user is on a screen that has 2.4 pixel density, which image is going to get picked? Um, there's no way for us to know which image the browser is going to pick. The source set list is a list of possible candidates and the browser itself is going to make a decision at the time the page is loaded um, based on a number of things that we don't know as we're coding this. So the browser is going to take into account the user's network connection, the user's device, and if possible, the user's preference. Um, there are browsers out there who have an option to disable high DPI images. So for users who know that they have limited bandwidth, they can actually force the browser to just download the smallest image possible. Um, that's the retina case. The second one is um, we still have the source set attribute, but now we add the sizes element and the W descriptor. So in the source set, again, we list our images. And we list them by the width of the image. So we use the W as the width in pixels. So in this case, big.png is 960 pixels wide and small.png is uh, 240 pixels wide. And then in the sizes attribute, so if we use the W descriptor, we also have to use the sizes attribute. They require each other. Um, 
In the sizes attribute, we can list media queries, followed by how the image should be displayed when that media query is matched. So in this case, we have, if a page has a max width of 600 pixels, the image has to be displayed at 50% of the viewport width. That's what the VW stands for. The next media query is if the page has a max width of 1100 pixels, display the image at 400 pixels wide. Lastly, we don't have a media query, but we have a default value, and that says that the image should be displayed at 100% of the viewport width, so sh show it all the way, show it in full width. Um, the, the, the order of the media queries here is quite important because the first one that matches is going to get executed. Right? It's not going to check each one and then execute the one that matches most. The first one in the list will um, be picked and will be used. Um, again here, the image that will be picked is selected by the browser. Next up, we have an entirely new element, the picture element. Um, and that is mostly used uh, these days for art direction. So in our previous examples, we were using the same image, um, but different file sizes of the image, or different resolutions of the image. With the picture element and art direction, we're actually going to be using a different image to show the user an image that is appropriate for the, the thing we want to show, but, it's also, but is also appropriate for the device that they're viewing it on. So in this example, we have the picture element, we have a source element and a media query in it, and then a source set, again, as we've seen earlier. And in the media element, we have a, a media query that says, if the page has a minimum width of 650 pixels, show a cat that's stretching. If we have a page that has a minimum width of 465 pixels, so show a cat that's sitting. If those two don't match, show a cat that's curled up. Right? The other example here, or another much used example here, is um, an image of the White House with President Barack Obama in front of it. And on a big screen, you see the White House and you see the president. On a smaller screen, you see just the president. And on your phone, you'll see just the president's face, right? So that way, the user gets an image that's appropriate for the story, and that's appropriate for the device that they're viewing it on. Second use case for the picture element is to um, use file extensions or use file types that are not supported by every browser. So in this case, we want to use a WebP image. Um, WebP is an image format that's comparable to JPEG, but has a much larger compression. So a WebP image for the same quality as a JPEG image is going to be much smaller, resulting in faster loading time, less bandwidth used, etc. The only downside is that WebP is not very supported in browsers these days. So you can use this in Chrome, um, but that's, I think, the only place where you can use it. What this is going to do is, in the picture element, the source set is going to have the WebP image and a type attribute. And if the browser supports WebP, it's going to use that. If it doesn't support WebP, it's going to fall back to image source, and you're just going to get your normal logo. Those are the two use cases for the picture element right now. Um, when can you start using this? Right? This is all very new. Um, we've all been using the image tag forever, basically. Um, this seems very new, um, but you can use this today. The support for this is active in most modern browsers and is coming to other. Um, this is shipped in Opera, Chrome, and in Firefox since May of this year. So you can use picture and source set in both of those. In Safari on iOS and on Mac, um, there's source set support, but no picture support yet. Um, and in Microsoft Edge, source set support is being worked on, is not yet, re not yet released, um, and picture is unconfirmed. So it might be coming, it might not be coming. But in the first four, so, um, well, the first three, because who uses Opera these days, um, there's Chrome, Firefox, and Safari. This works. You can use source set. Picture, not in Safari, but it's going to be there eventually. What's with the, uh, um, no support. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Microsoft is adding this in Microsoft Edge, not in IE 11. So, yeah. but the good news is that this is perfectly um, implementable with progressive enhancement. So in this example, we have a source set attribute and a sizes attribute. But as you can see, we also always have our normal source element, like we've had forever. So in a browser that supports source set and sizes, these two will be read. In a browser that doesn't, these two will be ignored, like they aren't there. And this one will get executed, like it always has. So that way, people with a more modern browser will get a better experience. People with an older browser or a browser that doesn't support this yet will get the same experience they've been getting for the past 15 or 20 years. Um, if you think, well, I actually want all my users to have this functionality, you can use a polyfill for this. Um, a polyfill is um, a JavaScript library that adds support to a browser for functionality that it doesn't have yet. Um, the, the polyfill you're going to want to use for this is picture fill. Um, it's built by the same people who built this, basically. Um, but if you do use it, make sure you read up on the notes about this, because there are some caveats. Um, if you have JavaScript disabled, then I don't think you get an image. Um, so that's different from if you just use the source attribute like you always would. Um, what does this mean for WordPress? Because that's why you're here, basically. Support for this is coming to WordPress in WordPress 4.4. Um, this got started as a plugin by the Responsive Images Community Group, um, I think in somewhere in, let me think, 2015, to, somewhere in 2014. This plugin got started um, initially by Tim Efko and Chris Coyer, and it is now being led by Joe McGill. It's supported by the Responsive Images Community Group, and the plugin, or the feature as it is now, um, adds source set and sizes support to WordPress. This has been in core since um, October 6th. If you want to read up on the coding details, you can check the merge post and the ticket. Um, but what does this actually mean, this uh, support for responsive images in WordPress? Well, any image that you add to your content will automatically get a source set attribute and a sizes attribute added to this. You won't have to do anything, and you won't see it being added either. There's no option to disable this or enable this in your dashboard. There's no extra UI or no settings. And the way this works is by running an extra filter um, on the content, and the filter is called WP, excuse me, WP Make Content Images Responsive. That's quite for both, so it does what it says on the tin. Um, and it uses a filter to do this instead of saving it with your actual post to uh, prevent that. If you switch a theme, so if you switch to a new theme, the new theme has a different image size, um, you'd have to update all your old posts to have the new markup. Um, but by filtering it on output, you always have images for, or you, also, you always have markup for every image size that is, is registered at that moment. Um, so if a team adds an image size using add image size, um, that also is included in this. It's also worth noting that there is no polyfill or no picture fill included in core. So um, users on older browsers will not get this functionality. There are a couple of extras that come along with this. Um, there is a new image size called medium large that's 768 pixels wide with no height set, so your images, is gonna, your images are going to scale. And this is not visible or not selectable. So you, when you insert an image into a post, you won't be able to select this size. This size is merely there um, as an in-between between medium and large for smaller viewports. Now, um, if you have a bunch of images, if well, you probably all have a bunch of images, and you want your existing images to also have this new size, you will have to regenerate thumbnails for those, or you'll have to use a plugin to do that. Um, there are also a bunch of helper methods available. Um, get attachment image source set and get attachment image sizes to 
get the new markup for a certain image if you want to code this manually and calculate image source set and calculate image sizes um, these also take a bunch of parameters that you can check out um, in the codex these days um, and last but not least um, max source set image width um, for team developers if your team has a maximum width like they all do um, you can use this to limit the, um, the maximum width of the, the elements in the source set attribute. For much more details on this and for much more um, explanations on this, you can read the, um, the post that Joe posted this week. Um, and you can also check the field guide for WordPress 4.4 that contains a bunch of information on this. Um, I think, yeah, one last slide. So to round things up, this works today. You can start using this today and you should start using this in your projects today. Um, this will get added to new browsers continuously and in the end all users are going to be able to take advantage of this. So there's no reason to wait when implementing this. Um, source set and sizes support is going to be in WordPress very soon um, and you should download the beta and try this. Um, I think we are on beta 4 right now um, and the 4.4 will be released I think early December so download it, give it a try, uh, play with it, see if you can break it, preferably before the release. Um, <laughs> and if you break it, you should be at Contributor Day tomorrow. Um, this is not part of my slides um, or part of my talk but I definitely recommend that you come and that you learn something new, try something new. Um, it's going to be fun. So, if there are any questions, shoot. I have two questions. One is, um, you mentioned that the picture element can be used to um, provide different images. You said, as an example, the president with his cat, and mm -hmm. you could draw trail for mobiles. Yeah. This is not part of the function that is added in WordPress? No, nope, it is not. Okay. The only thing that's being added to WordPress are source set and sizes, not the yeah. picture element. Probably we need to wait for a plugin then. Probably, yeah, because um, using the using picture for art direction um, will probably require a lot more interface and a lot more UI than is um, easy and good to do um, right away. So it's going to take quite a bit of iteration to get this in, if it gets in. Um, I don't think there are any plans to do that right now. And one more question mm -hmm. <laughs> is, um, you said that uh, there is a filter for WP, uh, WP content, which uh, will take care of the images mm -hmm. which you insert into the um, blog post. Yeah. But what about the artwork that you add to your theme, like like having a header image or so? Mm -hmm. I could imagine that it makes sense to use the um, picture element for that too. Yeah, and definitely. I could imagine that themes need to get rewritten to take care yeah. of this new functionality. Uh, you can use these new these new functions for that. Um, if the image comes from WordPress or comes from is, is uploaded media, you can run these on that image and you can get the new markup for that that way. Do, do you know if that is uh, already part in 2016? Mm, I think it is. Yeah. I'm not 100% sure, but do it yeah, yeah, I would expect it to be. Thank you very much. One question, I have a lot of image sizes. Are they all implemented automatically? You yeah. There's, there's no limit on it right now. They don't care about the sizes or anything? Like um, if you use the, the max source set image width, mm -hmm. that takes into, a, or, or that limits the number of sizes or the width of the sizes. But if you don't use that, they are all going to be added to the source set. Mm -hmm. More questions? OK. If you have more questions later, you can Tweet me or stop me or I'll be here all day and all tomorrow. Um, and thank you. <laughs>